Hello and welcome back to Math Area 1, Combinatorics at CSU. We are talking today about arithmetic of counting. We're continuing with the arithmetic operations and seeing what they're doing to uh, counting problems. We covered addition, multiplication, and subtraction in a previous video. And so today we're talking about division and how that interacts with all the other arithmetic operations. So the first way of stating the division principle is if A things are sorted into groups of size B, then there are A over B groups, A over B different collections that we made. So this is, again, a very simple principle that comes in handy a lot. Let's look at this simple example of six apples and you sort them into groups of size two. So say you're counting apples by two. How many groups did we sort them into? Well, you can see that it's three, but we could have calculated this as six divided by two. So there's six divided by two or three collections. Now there's another way of stating the division principle, a different uh, take on it. Um, if A things are sorted into B equal sized groups, then there's A over B things in each group. So as another example, I mean, take the same diagram. If you have six apples and you sort them into three evenly sized groups, then there's six divided by three or two apples in each group. So those are two ways of stating the division principle. Both come up very often in combinatorics. And we're going to see some examples today. Let's start with a very simple example. Say five friends share a box of 20 cookies evenly amongst themselves. How many cookies should each friend eat if they do this? So there's 20 cookies, five friends. You want to divide 20 by five and get four. Each person each four, four cookies. Let's look at something a little more challenging now. How many reorderings of the letters in the word math have the M coming before the A? So we've seen the problem of reordering the letters in math in any way in the factorials video. We saw that it was four factorial ways, total ways of rearranging the letters in math. And so we can start there and then hopefully either use you know, subtraction or division to um, just restrict to the ones in which M comes before the A. So division is similar to subtraction and sometimes in the sense that sometimes you start with something bigger and then uh, try to, to reduce it down to what you're looking for. So starting with the four factorial total orderings, you might notice that there are an equal number of permutations in which the A is before the M as in which the M is before the A, because for each such permutation, you can just switch the A and the M, and that can go back and forth. You, you make a one-to-one -one correspondence to, between the ones in which A is before M and the ones in which M is before A. So we can sort these permutations into two equal sized groups. And once you can do that, that's a hint to use the division principle. So now we know that to count just the ones where M is before A, we just take half. It's half of 24. Um, so we take 24 divided by two and we get 12. So that's a, a little more complicated example of the division principle in action. So this is also something that's called overcounting. And this is a, a principle that I wanna put in a box here. So a big tip, is if you count each element of a collection exactly b times, so you're counting and you count everything multiple times, each thing is counted b times instead of just once, and you get an answer of a, then actually there's a divided by b things. This is an immensely useful principle, and let's see an example of solving the handshake problem, which we've solved in previous videos um, using this principle. For instance, how many edges are in the complete graph K5? This was, you know, how many handshakes are there between people A, B, C, and D, and E if they all shake hands with each other? Well, let's overcount first by saying a handshake consists of one person and then another person. To pick one person and then a different person that they shake hands with, the number of pairs of distinct points is five times four. This includes pairs like A comma B and also B comma A. But wait, we don't want to count that twice. That corresponds to an edge being counted in both directions. Either A shakes hands with B or B shakes hands with A. So each edge in this count is counted twice. Um, so we overcounted by a factor of two. So instead of five times four, we get five times four divided by two. And actually we just get 10, which is the answer that we've gotten before using other methods. So now that's an example of using the division principle to solve some problems that we've already solved in other ways. Let's now use the division principle to solve another classical combinatorics question, which is sometimes called putting things on a necklace, arrangements on a necklace. In particular, it says, how many distinct ways can we rearrange the numbers one through n evenly around a circle up to rotation? 
What up to rotation means is that if you have a circle like uh, one, three, two, four, five around the circle, then if you rotate it, and now the one starts over here, and then the three, and then the two, and then four, and then five uh, come, they're in the same order. It, it's still considered the same way of putting the numbers around the circle. They're not considered different. And we just want to count the inequivalent ways of doing that. So the easier way of approaching this is to first overcount by not worrying about rotation by saying, actually, let's count all the arrangements of putting points around this fixed set of points, all the numbers around this fixed set of points in this orientation, um, assuming that rotations are actually different. So now there's five choices of what to put at the top. And then once you've chosen that, there's only four left for the second dot and three for the next and so on. So using the same principle, the multiplication principle in which we derive the factorial formula, we see that it's actually, in this case, five factorial, in general, n factorial. Um, and how many times did we overcount each thing that we're actually trying to count, which is a circle up to rotation? Well, since there's five rotations of each circle before it comes back to itself, we've overcounted by a factor of five or n in general. And so we divide by five, in this case we get 24. In general, you would take n factorial divided by n and get n minus one factorial. So now it's your turn. Now you try. Uh, say you have six distinct marbles and two identical buckets. You can't tell the difference between these buckets. How many ways can you put three marbles in each bucket? So you wanna just split your six into a group of three and a group of three. But remember, if you switch the buckets, you, that's not a different way of doing it. So try to use the division principle to do that and we will see you next time.